Today, there is a general consensus against colonialism, but there are still many forms of colonialism disguised in our lives all over the world. Much more than the actual details of the events of colonialism that took place throughout history, it is crucial to know how the thought of colonialism initiated and developed over the course of centuries. Basically, it is only one out of many forms where a powerful system subdues others. From banks to arms manufacturers and from governments to big pharma. We see every day how large interest groups exploit the planet and its people. It is the same animalistic instinct of greed, power and domination built in man that Sigmund Freud talked about. The same urge to dominate led the colonial conquests of the ancient Greeks and the Egyptians. From all this, one can contemplate the question of how ignorant the average person or even the above average person has been or still is by considering that a lot of times the pretext used for colonization was the civilizing mission and you would also be getting closer to the answer as ignorant as your common man on the street because that pretext was mostly not revolted against by the people especially by the people of the colonizing countries the colonizers claimed that the people of a certain country needed a period of tutelage and hence us. Sounds familiar? Build democracy. Democracy. Of liberal democracy. Promoting democracy. Democracy. Variants of such reasoning are also used today as justifications for wars and other interventions. Such is the audacity of the ruling elite that they do not even bother to come up with a new or a significantly different idea to plunder a country. Here comes another point that if we were vigilant enough, we could have easily called out the invading forces for the heist that they had planned. As Thomas Jefferson once said, the tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with blood of tyrants and patriots. But colonialism has been practiced since the ancient history of mankind, but the actual recognition of the practice started to come in the 19th century, where ironically it was the centuries before that saw most of what has happened in the history of colonialism. When the internal economy was at its full production capacity, According to the production methods at the disposal of the Portuguese in the 15th century, they started looking for new trade routes and civilizations and ended up colonizing North Africa, starting off the era known as the Age of Discovery. Some researchers regard that to be the initiation of contemporary colonialism. Spain, England, the Netherlands and the French started sending out their own missionaries looking for new resources and land. This era is sometimes referred to as the first wave of colonial expansion, where 3G technology, I mean 3G philosophy, was behind these conquests. These days, 4G is used. God, guns, gold, and glory. Do check out that book. Most countries managed to gain independence from the Europeans during the 18th and the 19th century beginning with the American Revolution and the Haitian Revolution. After that, the second wave was in the 19th and the 20th century, centered around the African continent known as the Scramble for Africa. Much of the boundaries of countries in today's Africa were drawn at that time when the colonizers left after they had sucked all the valuables out of those lands. It is not necessary that colonialism is always done through violence. One example of peaceful colonialism can be said of that where China controlled Mongolia. But there is still this agreement in the literary circles about whether that can even be called as an example of colonialism or not. The Moors, the Ottomans and the Romans all expanded into adjacent areas but that was then when there was not much concentration or population in those areas. The thing is, the act of colonizing itself was a source of causing violence. How? Imagine you need to suppress an uprising against you in a foreign land. 
would you not have them fight someone else rather than you? Like uh, among themselves? One source of the age-old policy of divide and rule is exactly this practice of colonial powers grouping together opposing groups into same areas or systems. Whether they were religious, ethnic or political differences, they were exacerbated to the maximum and the colonial masters continued ruling with impunity. The reason why the frequency of colonialism increased in the 15th century was advances in technology which led to the European colonialism that is so notorious today. The reason for its notoriety is not only advances in communication but also that it was on a mass scale. Africa, the Americas, Asia all came under its wrath. One of the worst practices done in these colonization atrocities was slave trading. The transatlantic slave trade transported between 10 to 12 million enslaved Africans from Africa across the Atlantic Ocean to the Americas from the 16th to the 19th century. The Portuguese, the Dutch, the Spanish all were involved in slave trading from their colonies. We could not have dealt with this topic without talking about why the N-word is so repulsive, not only for people of dark color, but for all people who deem racism to be a menace. Those slaves that we just talked about were referred to by that name. And till this day, it is used as an insult. That is why the blacks all over the world take such offense to it. They say that we are not slaves anymore. And now that you have reminded us of the gruesome oppression that we were subjected to, we shall... <laughs> Well, whatever he or she then intends to do to you. And whenever you need to talk about this country, remember to spell it correctly. Or else, the worst form of colonialism is settler colonialism. In settler colonialism, the indigenous population is exterminated and the land is declared to be a new country. In other forms, after taking over the system of governance by the colonizing powers, the social administration systems are altered and the resources are plundered. These two are the prime examples in the history of settler colonialism. A more recent example is Occupied Palestine, sometimes also known as this country. The Europeans did it through the sea route around the southern coast of Africa and in America. Colonialism has been an equally important of a force in shaping our history as it has been a negative one. The balance of power shifted from the Mediterranean to the Atlantic and it gave rise to the modern fascist ideas. There has been a vast array of work done on the philosophy and the process of colonialism. Some of the distinguished ones are provided below in the description of this video. One form of colonialism is what happened in India. As the largest colony of the world's largest imperial power, India is often cited by apologists for the British Empire as an example of successful colonialism. In a classic debate between distinguished scholars at the Oxford Union, the point that the British still owe reparations to India till this day was made very strongly. The link to the video is in the description and if you would be interested in a little detail of one facet of the umbrella concept of colonialism, you should definitely watch that video. Anyhow. What happened in India by the British was a part of the series of European conquests for the economic and strategic benefit of Europe. Another innovative, for the lack of a better term, example of colonialism was the US killing about 100,000 people in the Philippines over a century ago. There was racism spread against the people of Philippines on biblical proportions and people in the US did not even know about it. Even when intellectuals like Mark Twain, the father of American literature, and Jose Rizal wrote extensively against it. As Christ died to make men holy, let men die to make us rich. Mark Twain, 